Hello everyone, welcome to the secrets of Badaka. Badaka means obstruction, difficulty, obstacles, a sign, a house and planets in your chart which have to be seen from your own personal chart show Badaka in this lifetime. It's a most important factor to analyze in any Vedic horoscope. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below and if the video is good, give it a thumbs up. Let's begin. So the first point, everybody, what exactly is this Badaka effect? You may know of this if you've been doing Vedic astrology for a while, or you may not. But let me explain to you. Badaka means obstacles, obstructions that come into our life of necessity. It's a very important factor to understand what house, what sign, what planets are actually bringing this into your life. In fact, the word badak itself actually means tormentor. So the actual badak effect is coming from Rahu, not Rahu in your chart, but to Rahu as a basic principle of destruction and difficulty in our life. And actually, Badaka has no remedy. It's just part of this material existence. Obstacles, obstructions are simply part of Buloka. No living entity can live a life without these factors. In fact, the best remedy is awareness. Just being aware of those areas in your life where Badaka effect is happening. This gives you the strength to overcome the obstacles. Don't forget, overcoming obstacles in life will always lead to success. So, let's identify the Badaka factor in your chart. The first step, everyone, is to identify the house in your chart, which is the Badaka house. We're looking at the D1 birth chart from the Ascendant only. By the way, if you're not sure about your Vedic chart, check the link below to a website where you can bring that up straight away. For cardinal signs rising, that means for Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, it's the 11th house in your chart. For the fixed rising signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, it's the 9th house. And for the dual or mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces, it's the 7th house in your chart. Now, nothing in Vedic astrology is random. Nothing is just coming out of the sky. There is a definite rationale for these house placements being Badaka. It's coming from the Rahu effect. Rahu is tormentor. He is the ultimate Badaka. And he is Badaka for the sun. He eclipses the sun. For example, when the sun is exalted in the first cardinal sign Aries, the home of Rahu, the tormentor, is Aquarius which is the 11th sign. And then sun goes forward into the first fixed sign, which is Taurus. And Rahu goes backwards from Aquarius into Capricorn, being the ninth house and so on. That is the deep rationale. Now, what about the basic meaning of these Badaka houses in your chart then from your ascendant? Does this mean that all cardinal signs have got friendship issues because the 11th house is impacted? All fixed signs have got father, education, maybe foreign land problems, and all dual signs have some relationship problems? Yes, actually, they are the basic bottom line of Badaka. But that's the basic level, and Badaka is far more than that. To see the actual obstruction difficulty in your life, we need to look a lot deeper than that. We need to identify the planets in the Badaka house exactly as they are in your chart. Check out that house. They become a real source of obstruction. Next thing, we look at the ruler of that Badaka house. That becomes Badakesha, ruler of Badaka. Where has that ruler or more than one ruler very often gone in your chart? Those houses also become a source of obstruction. Don't worry, I'm going to go through every ascendant in a minute. And lastly, of great importance, the aspecting planets to the Badaka house. You may have no planets in your Badaka house, but many planets aspecting. So equally important are these aspecting planets. Now, looking at aspecting planets to the Badaka house, we're using Vedic aspects. Dristi aspects, that is aspects of the planet like Saturn has third 7th and 10th aspect, etc. And very importantly, aspect by sign. Sign or Rasi aspect becomes very important. And if you're not sure of that, don't worry. I'm going to show you them for all ascendants. 
So you might find it quite helpful to have your chart out actually in front of you or maybe in your head. I know some people know their charts so well. With that in mind, let's begin. If your ascendant is Aries, your 11th house Aquarius is your Badaka house. You probably worked that out already. So have you got planets in Aquarius? If you are Aries Lagna, put a note to those planets. We're going to talk about them. They become Badaka. The Lord of Aquarius is Saturn and Rahu. Check the houses they have gone into. Badaka effect will be found there also. And any planets conjuncting Saturn and Rahu in your chart, wherever they are, will also bring Badak effect. Now, for Aries Ascendant, which houses have a Rasi aspect? Onto the 11th house, it's your rising sign Aries, 4th house of Cancer, and 7th house of Libra. If you have any planets in these houses, they become Badaka effect also because of their house aspect to the 11th house. If you are Taurus Ascendant, the ninth house Capricorn is your Baddock house. Note any planets there. Also note where the Lord has gone shiny because he is the Lord Badacacia. Where he has gone, that area of life is impacted. Also be careful to note any conjunctions to Saturn. Planets in the same sign as Saturn will become Badaka also because of association with your Badacacia, which is Saturn. Equally important will be planets that are aspecting to your ninth house from the relevant houses. For Taurus, it's the first, fourth, and seventh house are aspecting the ninth house. So Taurus ascendant, Leo fourth house, and Scorpio seventh house. Any planets in there have a Badaka effect. For Gemini ascendant, the seventh house in your chart, Sagittarius, is your Badaka house. Any planets in Sagittarius have Badaka effect. Note them carefully. Note also Jupiter, Badakesha, lord of this house. Where is Jupiter gone in your chart? That house is going to have Badaka impact. And please note any conjunctions to Jupiter, they will be also causing a Badaka effect. Also, any planets in the signs in the yellow boxes here, Gemini rising sign, your fourth house of Virgo and your 10th house of Pisces. Planets in these houses will be impacting Badaka also by their Rasi aspect. For Cancer Ascendant, it's the 11th house of your chart, the sign Taurus, which is Badaka in your chart. So any planets in Taurus, take a note of them. They become Badaka. Check the lords of the house, Badakesha, which are Venus and the moon. Check where Venus is. That house becomes obstacle and moon also. Obstacles come into that house. Carefully note any planets in conjunction to either Venus or the Moon. They will also have a Badaka effect. And check the planets having a Rasi aspect from the following houses to Taurus, which is Badaka house. So planets in your ascending sign Cancer, in your fourth house of Libra, and your seventh house of Capricorn. Any planets there will also have a Badak influence. For Leo Ascendant, it's a ninth house in your chart, Aries, which is your Badaka house. Note any planets carefully in Aries, they have a Badaka effect. Note Mars, Lord of that house, your Badakesha. Where is Mars in your chart? That house is implicated. And any planets in conjunction to Mars also become Badaka. Check out the Rasi aspects for Leo from the ascendant sign of Leo, from the fourth house of Scorpio on the opposite sign of Aquarius. Planets in these three houses are having a Rasi aspect onto your Badaka house. They will have a Badaka effect also. For Virgo ascendant, your Badaka house is the seventh house of Pisces. Any planets in Pisces become Badaka. Take a note of them. Also take a note of Jupiter and K2. They are Badakesha. They are the lords of your Badaka house. So where is Jupiter gone in your chart? Where is K2 gone? Those houses become impacted and any conjunctions to Jupiter or to K2 also have a Badaka effect. Note the aspecting planets from the following houses to your seventh house Badaka. For Virgo, it's the rising sign of Virgo, the fourth house of Sagittarius and the tenth house of Gemini. Any planets there will have a Badaka effect also. If you are Libra rising, your Badaka house is the 11th house Leo sign. So any planets in Leo have a Badaka effect. Take a note of them. 
Also note where the sun, Lord of Leo, has gone. That house becomes impacted with the Badaka factor and any planets in conjunction to the sun also have a Badaka effect. Note them carefully. And aspecting planets also bring Badaka into your life. So check out your first house of Libra, your fourth house and your seventh house. So planets in Libra, in Capricorn and in Aries. All of these planets also influence your Badaka house. For Scorpio Ascendant, it's a ninth house in your chart, Cancer, which is your Badaka house and sign. Any planets in Cancer, take a note of them. They become Badaka for you. And note the moon, the lord of your Badaka house, Badakasia. Where is the moon gone in your chart? That house will become influenced also by this Badaka effect. And any planets in conjunction to the moon also become Badaka for you. Check the aspecting planets to your ninth house, Scorpio. Planets in your rising sign of Scorpio, in your fourth house, Aquarius, and your seventh house, Taurus, will also have a Baddock effect. If you are Sagittarius Ascendant, the seventh house in your chart, Gemini, is Baddock. Any planets in Gemini become Baddock for you. Take a note of them. And also of Mercury in your chart, who becomes Baddockatia. Where is Mercury gone in your chart? That house gets a Baddock effect. And any planets in conjunction to Mercury, take a note also, they have also a Baddock factor. Aspecting planets to your seventh house, Gemini, are going to come from Sagittarius first house from your fourth house Pisces and your tenth house of Virgo. Take a note of them. They will also bring a Badaka influence. For Capricorn Ascendant, the eleventh house Scorpio is your Badaka house. Take note of planets in Scorpio. They have a Badaka effect. And also for Mars and K2. Mars and K2 are the Badakasia, lords of Scorpio. So where is Mars in your chart? Where is K2 in your chart? Note those houses carefully. But acacia obstruction comes into that house and any planets in conjunction to either Mars or K2 also have a Badaka effect. Finally, Capricorn Ascendant, take note of planets which are aspecting by sign aspect to your 11th house of Scorpio. Planets in Capricorn, ascending sign, planets in your 4th house and planets in your 7th house. So, planets in Capricorn, planets in Aries and planets in Cancer. They aspect this house and also have a Badaka effect. Aquarius rising, the ninth house of your chart is Libra and is your Badaka house. Any planets in Libra, they will have a Badaka effect. Take note of them. Also take note of Venus. Venus is Badakasia. So wherever Venus is in your chart, Aquarius, that house is afflicted with Badaka influence. And any planet in conjunction to Venus also has a Badaka effect. In addition, take note of any aspecting planet from the Rassi sign aspects. So your first house, your fourth house and your seventh house all aspect your ninth house. So planets in Aquarius, planets in Taurus and in Leo, they will also have a Badaka influence. Finally, Pisces rising, the seventh house of Virgo is your Badaka house. Take note of any planets in Virgo. They will have a Badaka effect in your life. And also check Mercury and Rahu because they are rulers of your Badaka sign Virgo. Where is Mercury in your chart? Where is Rahu in your chart? And any conjunctions to either Mercury or Rahu will bring Badaka effect into your life. Check out the aspecting planets from these three houses, from the first house of Pisces, the fourth house of Gemini, and the tenth house of Sagittarius. These all have a Rassi aspect onto your Badaka house, and these planets will also have a Badaka effect. Now you've identified the houses, the planets, the aspects that are all giving you Badaka effect. How do you judge the effect? Let me give you five simple rules for this that will, I hope, make it easier for you. Don't forget, some charts seem to have multiple factors affecting Badaka and some charts very few. It doesn't really matter. It does not change intensity or challenge because the most important factors I'm going to give you now. 
First of all, there is no hierarchy to which planet has most Badaka influence. So planets in the house are equally Badaka to the ruler of the house and the planets aspecting the house or conjuncting the ruler are equally Badaka. Having said that, though, it is important to note that the malefic planets have an intensity to their Badak effect. So wherever they are in the house, lord of the house, aspecting whatever, Mars, Shani, Rahu and Ketu, Mars, Saturn, Rahu and Ketu will have a very intense and absolute Badak effect. Especially, I have to say, Saturn. Saturn perhaps has in itself a very strong badak effect because he rules obstacles saturn rules obstruction so it goes without saying saturn influencing badaka is extremely strong in itself for example there's a big misunderstanding about taurus lagner for whom saturn is badakasha lord of the ninth house capricorn he has a very strong obstacle obstruction effect for taurus despite the fact people think he's yoga karaka he is not Yoga Karaka so much as Rahu. If you are confused, check out my last Any Question video. I talk about this there. Any Question 7. Third point, watch the sun. If the sun is in your Badaka house, Badakasha, for example, he is Badakasha for Libra. And if he is with any conjunction to your Badakasha or aspecting Badaka house, be careful with honesty, openness, fairness, being dharmic at all time. The sun will not obstruct as much if you are dharmic. It's really important to understand. Dharmic means following righteous path at all times. The slightest deviation and he will come down like a rock with a major huge obstacle. Fourth point, a very subtle point, but very important. Lagna Badaka, what I'm doing in this video, Badaka from Ascendant. Ascendant is intelligent. So when Badaka obstructions, obstacles come, they often come because of wrong decisions. So when those obstacles come up and you see that, that you are in, say, a Badaka house dasha, a transit to your Badaka house, you can be sure that you must check every decision which you make. Check it out with somebody else. Just a very important tip. So the fifth important way to judge is watch the Dasha, the Bukti periods and the transits. So Dasha or Bukti of any planet in your Badaka house, aspecting the house or Badakesha Lord itself, there will be obstacles, obstruction without doubt and very often linked to your decision making. So now you know that you can have extra caution. And taking note of your Badaka sign and house, watch any planets transiting there, particularly, of course, Shani. Shani more than anything else because he is a Badaka-type planet himself. For instance, right now, for Taurus Ascendant since 2020, Saturn's been in their Badaka house. Saturn in Capricorn has brought many obstacles, obstructions to Taurians, but Taurians take things slow and probably they've been able to overcome many of these obstacles by taking care, not being too impulsive. So watch out for Saturn definitely transiting in your Bataka house. With that in mind, let's move on now to judge the individual planets that may be having a Badaka effect in your chart and the house placements of your Badakasha. Let's go. If the sun is a Badaka planet for you in your chart in all of the ways I've just explained under your ascendant sign, then you should know that government agencies or BAS, father even very often will become some source of obstruction to you difficult to you particularly in sun mahadasha or sun bukti you will definitely see this effect now the way to deal with the badaka effect of the sun is to be honest open and crystal clear at all times following dharmic path righteous path don't be tempted by any underhand action. If you stay honest and true, the Badaka factor of the sun will be lessened. If the moon is implicated as a Badaka planet in any way in your chart, then your mother may become a source of obstruction. She may have ill health. She may have problems. There may be some separation, lack of understanding between you. And your mind is also the moon. So 
Your mind is easily becoming anxious, easily becoming irritated by this Baudicca effect. So don't become impatient, especially if you have a Baudicca planet, which is the moon. So you can overcome the Baudicca effect of the moon by nourishing others, by feeding others, by giving emotional understanding to others. This takes you out of your own head, as it were, and it actually helps you to overcome these difficult emotions. When Mercury is the Baudicca planet, watch out for difficulties in communication. You may have speech problems, communication problems, language problems, all of these things may occur, but you can certainly overcome these obstacles. Now, Mercury is Karika for business, so business difficulties will be there. Mercury also represents sister, siblings, but definitely sister may be implicated in this Mercury Baudicca factor. Now, Mercury is friendship, so be very important about who you choose to confide in, who your friends are. Depends what's happening to the planet in your chart, but basically, when Mercury has a bad occur effect, friends may be creating more obstacles for you, having a bad influence on you. Just be careful to choose your friends wisely. Make sure all financial dealings, business dealings are above board at all times, especially when the sun is in any way, as I've just said, connected to this mercury Baudicca factor. And you can find relief from some of these obstructions through nature. Mercury is planet of nature, being in nature, being with trees, countryside, nature in any form whatsoever can be healing. If the planet Venus Sucre is implicated as a Baddock planet, it goes without saying that relationships for both male and female, any sort of relationship, will be implicated. It's difficult to cooperate. There's a very strong desire nature, almost lusty nature sometimes, which needs to be controlled a little bit to have cooperation. Now, for everybody, as I've said, male and female, whatever the sexuality, Venus will create difficulty finding, connecting to suitable partner. But especially in a male chart, it can show difficulty finding suitable wife or being on the same wavelength as the wife can sometimes be a problem. Venus also implicates everything about material enjoyment in your life. So getting real pleasure from life with your clothes, with your vehicles, with your home, with your entertainment, whatever you are doing in your life for fun, pleasure, Venus being Baudicca factor can obstruct this. This can lead to sometimes mental health problems, depression, etc. And very often it can lead to addictions. Be careful about this and take care of yourself to avoid this downward spiral. But that would only be with a very afflicted Venus. Can you mitigate some of the Venus problems if Venus is Baudicca through kindness to females? Venus is strongly related to the female sex. So being kind to women, even if you are female, is very important indeed. When the planet Mars has any Baudicca effect, whether it's in your Baudicca house, lord of the house, aspecting the house, conjuncting a planet from the house, whatever it is, there's conflict, there's quarrel, there's contention, there's ego issues in your life that seem to provide you with endless obstacles and obstruction. There's a strong desire nature and impatience also. So Mars can attract accidents, mishaps, all sorts of injuries also, especially in Mahadasha periods. Mars is Karika for brothers in your life and also sometimes cousins. So if you should have brothers, cousins who have a strong impact on your life, they will often create more obstacles than anything else. But this doesn't mean that you cannot have good relationships. Avoid quarrels, avoid contention, calm communication down with these people as much as you can. So to bring out Mars from the Baudicca factor, you have to use Mars at the highest level, not selfish ego factors. Being a warrior for ethical causes in the world can help you. Definitely being vegetarian always calms down any Mars affliction. Now, when Jupiter or Guru is a Baudicca planet, he's a benefic planet. He wants to help you, but he's become Baudicca because you're not listening to good advice, basically. Are you listening to your teachers, mentors, gurus? Probably not. You are seeing them as a source of obstruction. 
And Jupiter as Badaka can show difficulties with your children because Jupiter is Karaka, difficulties in your education and difficulty with your spiritual and ethical direction. But because Jupiter is benefic, after many false turns, this can improve. As a Badaka planet, Jupiter can stop the flow of wealth in your life periodically, especially in Mahadasha. So what you've got to do is be patient, be ethical, be honest, be open, be all the things that Jupiter requires. And foreign lands actually connected to Jupiter might also be a source of obstruction. This means any foreign travel at all. And finally, Jupiter is Corica for husbands. So in a female chart, depending on many other factors as well, Jupiter can delay marriage or find difficulty finding harmony with the husband. But in itself, that's unlikely to happen. It has to be connected to seventh house factors in some way. Now, when Saturn becomes Badica planet, either from Capricorn or from Aquarius, so this would be for Aries ascendant and Taurus ascendant, Patience is the virtue you need, and it's easier for Taurus probably than for Aries. But of course, you may have Saturn as your Badaka planet, not just being Badakasha. He may be in your Badaka house. He may be aspecting, same thing applies. You've got to slow down in life. You'll be made to slow down many times, even though you actually find this difficult. These delays, Saturn is the actual Karaka of delay, and now he's become a Badaka factor as well. You will find, though, the time is your best friend when you've got Saturn as Badaka. Patience, waiting, trying again and again and again, never giving up, being persistent, hard working and Saturn will reduce Badaka effect over time. Now Saturn as a Badaka effect can affect your health most definitely so you must create good habits to curb this Saturn Badaka effect. You must have good diet, exercise and most important Saturn is time. Using time wisely, not wasting time, is really important. Going to bed early can definitely affect because Saturn is about good routine in your life. Try that out if you have Saturn as a Badaka planet. When Rahu connects to your Badaka house, is your Badakasha or affects Badaka planet in any way, Sudden shocks, sudden developments in that area of your life will occur, which give you obstruction, which stop you in your path. Say you've got Rahu as your Badakasha, Badaka Lord, and he happens to be in the seventh house of your chart. You can expect that relationships go through shocking changes, sudden ups and downs sometimes. So certainly big ups and downs will occur in any conjunction or house aspect with Rahu when he is Badakasha or a Badaka planet of any sort. But here's the good news. Rahu always renews. Rahu will always seek a way out of any problem. If any planet can avoid obstacles, Badaka, it's Rahu. That is in his mischievous nature. But he will always take a shortcut out around the obstacle. This is your biggest task. Don't take it. Be, be honest. Be above board. Take the dharmic path. Otherwise, quick ways out, quick solutions will be very tempting. But if they are harming others, if they are dishonest, a big thing about Rahu is, is deception, they will not work. They will just create more obstruction. So honesty, forthrightness, doing everything above board will help you. Sometimes foreign lands can be obstructive for you, but with a benefic factor, with Rahu, foreign lands could even take you out of obstruction. You have to see the whole chart. Now, when K2 becomes Badaka effect, there are two ways things can go. First of all, K2 has a Mars-like aspect to himself because he's very aggressive. But how do you use it wisely? K2 can just turn away, become detached, become unemotional, faced with any Badaka situation. 
On the other hand, he is headless. He can become a little bit desperate, a little bit carefree. He can just do whatever he needs to do, not bothering about anybody else at all. So you can get yourself into some big fixes when you try to contain Badaka obstacle effect in your life when K2 is influencing the situation. What you have to do is to become detached for sure, not let things get to you, turn away, spirituality helps you, certainly, but don't become headless. Don't do things impulsively under the influence of a Badaka K2. Things can go terribly wrong. Next for the Badakasha, the planet or planets, because there may be more than one, who lord your Badaka house. Check out the house placements they have in your chart. There are important readings to be seen. Oh, when the lord of your Badaka house has gone into the first house of your chart, you can be the source of your, of your own obstacles, or Badaka lord will simply bring health problems into your life. The most important factor, though, to understand when you have bad acacia in the first house is that you and your decision making is the be all and end all of it. This is the house of your intelligence, finding path in your life. So you may find obstacles finding correct path in life. You may be unsure which direction to take many times. Taking it slow, taking advice will always take you out of these difficult phases. But Acacia's gone to the second house of your chart, your family will provide obstacles for you. Your family of origin may be on a completely different wavelength to yourself. You may rebel against them. They may not understand you. They may be trying to help you, but creating obstacles in your life. It's completely karmic. You have to be very cautious, very kind, very considerate, dealing with family members at all times. It's a house of finances and assets. But Acacia Lord will definitely give you many ups and downs financially. It doesn't mean that you're going to be poor. It doesn't mean that you're going to be rich. It simply shows that ups and downs, obstacles, maintaining assets, maintaining financial stability will be there. But Acacia's gone to the third house of your chart. Problems with your neighbours, problems with your cousins, siblings, particularly siblings, close family sometimes. Problems with travel. You're very restless, on edge, You're always wanting to do something new. It's hard to find steadiness in your life. Avoid quarrels, contentions. They can just go into a loop of never-ending problems. Now, but Acacia in the fourth house is, is quite a deep placement, actually. There's a lot of karmic factors here. It's to do with the mother, but the time in the womb. So your early life, basically, as a child, not, not even born, there was some Badaka influence there. This can mean that there was a very difficult pregnancy for your mother. Birth was an obstacle in some way or she was having difficulties, problems in her life even before you were born. Now, these come into your subconscious mind as well and have a strong influence on you. Later in life, you can have domestic problems, difficulty finding suitable home, problems buying, selling property. You need to take patience in all of these areas to the highest level. And the Badakasha Lord of your Badaka house gone into the fifth house in your chart. There will definitely be issues with education. Learning becomes difficult for you. It's hard to focus your mind. With practice, however, you will overcome these obstacles. You may have difficulties with your children, particularly first child sometimes, but it's all to do with adaptability mostly. Check the Lord of the fifth house, check other aspects to the fifth house to confirm these factors. Be careful with speculation when the bad acacia has gone into the fifth house, unexpected obstacles, roadblocks, it's not going to be straightforward. Try to keep everything on a very mundane and straight level with your finances. Big risks are very difficult to actually work out for you when the bad acacia has gone to the fifth house. There will be health upsets and difficulties when the Badakesh has gone into the sixth house, certainly, particularly if it's a malefic, actually malefic as Badakesh can bring more difficulty. If it's benefic, many little problems coming up, but much more easily dealt with. 
Litigation, conflicts, difficulty are par for the course when the Lord of the Badaka house is in the sixth house. Try to resolve these quickly. Don't draw out litigation to the last moment. Learn how to let things go. You will be far happier. When the Badaka Lord Badakesh is in the seventh house, it goes without saying there will be obstacles to marriage. There will be difficulty finding spouse, finding commitment with spouse sometimes, but it does not preclude successful marriage because seventh house Lord planets here as well and the D9 have all to be considered. Seventh house is marketplace, so in, in all business factors it can be very difficult very up and down, but it does not preclude success because obstacles in any business marketplace factors are par for the course. Only with severe affliction would it completely stop successful business happening. But occasion going to the eighth house is an interesting factor here. Life tends to go through big changes suddenly and dramatically. You are in a completely different situation domestically, work-wise, relationship-wise. Things shift very, very quickly when Lord of a Badaka house is in this Dustana 8th house. The key is not to look backwards. When this Lord of your Badaka house is in this 8th house, you have to go with the complete change. You have to start afresh. You have to be prepared not to be hankering for the past. If you can do that, obstacles become absolutely stepping stones rather than hindrances. The dasher, though, of this Badaka Lord in this 8th house will be troublesome. There can be chronic health problems, all of these things. But once again, good aspects, favourable placement of this 8th house Lord can prevent some of that. Main thing is financially be cautious about speculation, particularly stock market. This is the actual house of stock market speculation. It could all go very wrong indeed. Remain conservative in all financial dealings. But Acacia, Lord of your Badaka house, has gone into the ninth house. This is quite interesting, just like in the fourth house. There's a karmic factor, this time with the father's line with your father's family. Difficulties in your father's life or his father, going back quite a few generations actually, are coming to afflict you in this lifetime. Don't get upset with your father, with your with your grandfather. It, it is probably going far further back. This is the house of the pit trees. You have problems even with your father, quarrels, contentions. Higher education learning can be broken. That There can be difficulties, doubts about are you on the right course? Are you in the right system of religion, philosophy? All of these higher learning, higher understanding, higher philosophy puts you into a spin sometimes. But the bad acacia here shows that you need a higher learning, higher system of philosophy, belief system, guru, mentor. You need this deeply, so don't give up on this. It will sustain you through many difficult times. And foreign travel, being in foreign lands, may provide difficulty because the ninth house represents that. Be cautious about traveling. Don't be impulsive. Expect there to be delays, obstacles, because it's all part of your karma to experience these difficulties. Having patience, just like by the Keisha third house, helps you get round most difficulties in your life. The Lord of your Badaka house, by the Keisha, has gone to the tenth house. Many obstacles in your career path, many changes, many difficulties, sudden shocks. You will have to walk this minefield to get success. It doesn't mean that you will not get success, but there will certainly be obstacles. But don't create hurdles for yourself with agitation and fear factors in your career. Maybe it's a good thing to change career occasionally. Maybe it's a good thing to start afresh, but don't do it too often. These obstacles can become stepping stones if you stay with them. That's the thing. Purpose, focus can help you overcome these don't keep on running away from the obstacles in your career path. They are entirely karmic and you can deal with them. 
Now, but Acacia's gone to the 11th house of your chart. Watch your friendship network circles. Watch who you associate with because you can get drawn into difficult friendship conflicts and all sorts of issues dealing with larger groups. So friends, are they good for you? Are they helping you? Are they taking you higher or are they just distracting you and causing a nuisance in your life? Think about it carefully. 11th house people include colleagues who you work with. Don't get involved in office politics disputes, all of those backstabbing situations, for goodness sake. Badaka Lord here will just make it endless without resolution and it will not help your earning capacity. This is the actual house of earnings. Earnings will have dramatic changes, definitely. They will be very, very excellent and then go right down. But you always come up again when you learn to deal with this sort of pattern in your life. The Badaka Lord, Badaka, has gone to the 12th house of your chart, foreign lands, foreign settlements. Can these be good for you if Badaka effect is here? Yes, actually, it can be very good indeed. Funnily enough, when you go into foreign lands, Badaka effect can actually disappear, be absorbed. So foreign settlement can be good, but you must confirm seeing the Lord of the 12th house to be certain. What won't be absorbed, though, are the anxieties and fears that come with this 12th house placement. Learn to relax, find spiritual wisdom, meditation. This will help you enormously. Expenses can be a big thing time to time because Badaka Lord is here. Once again, though, strangely, this 12th house is about loss. So Badaka Lord going here, Badakasha problems can be absorbed, reduced. Have more faith, face obstacles in your life with a hopeful attitude and they will probably disappear far more quickly than you could believe. Now, a little bit extra, everybody, a top secret for sure. People with their ascendant sign, the same as your Badaka Lord sign, have a tendency to facilitate obstacles in your life, not of their own will. It's not their fault. It's just a factor of the Badaka effect. A very quick example, everybody. Say you've got Gemini rising, third sign, Gemini. Badakasha is the opposite sign, Sagittarius, who has one lord, and that is Jupiter. So Badakasha, Jupiter, in this case, say, has gone into the fourth house, into the sign of Virgo. So anybody who has got Virgo Lagna feels the effect of your Badakasha, Jupiter, and this can cause the problems I've discussed. Of course, these people may be friends of yours, even spouse, even your boss. Sometimes they can be very much found in the workplace, by the way, once again, because there's more people there. But here's the thing. Don't become antagonistic. These may be family members also. Please understand what exactly is happening. You see, Badaka is always, as I've said on the video, a Rahu type effect. So when your Badaka Lord kicks off somebody's ascendant, to be sure they will have that Rahu effect coming onto their head ascendant when they are dealing with you. You will seem someone who needs to be controlled. They will have that smoke and illusion of Rahu. They do not see your real motivations. They do not see you as you are. So don't blame them if they get antagonistic oppositional towards you. It's part of the actual Badaka karma. Try to be tolerant. Try to deal with these sort of situations in a sensitive way. And finally, everyone, let's bring it all together with some example charts to make it easy for you to understand how the Badaka effects work. Five charts I've used before on my channel, but this is a good thing so you can see the beauty and the depth of the Vedic system. Let's look at Boris Johnson first of all. Now he's the ex-British Prime Minister. Not at all surprised at that. I've analysed his chart many times. Last time I did that, a few weeks ago, my goodness, I was talking about the terrible Saturn transits he's been undergoing and the afflictions to his moon, Mahadasha. I'm not surprised that he's moving on to a new phase. But we can see this also from the Badaka. Like many famous successful people, Boris Johnson has quite a lot of Badaka factor in his chart. He's got Virgo rising, the 12th sign Pisces is his Badaka house, 7th house. But just look at the afflictions here. Rahu afflicts, Venus afflicts, Sun afflicts and Cato afflicts this Badaka house. No, no planets in there. But the Lord has gone to the 8th house 
and the other lord to the fourth house. Let's discuss. The influence of Rahu, Venus and the Sun all influencing his Badaka house, seventh house. His relationships have been extremely challenging, at least changeable. He's had three marriages now, some illegitimate children. A lot of controversy has happened there. There's no doubt about it. Rahu definitely brings that. As I've said, in a male chart, Venus represents the wife, and so this Rahu effect, this sun factor, his own path is linked to his his wife, actually. But this is now his third wife, and this is quite a spiritual experience for him. Check the last video. I discussed his chart and the Tithi factor also. Where are the obstacles coming for Boris Johnson, obviously, in his career through the Sun-Venus-Rahu conjunction. There's something illusionary, something Rahu-like about him. He is not really inside what he presents to the world that is clearly seen, and obstacles come to him from all of these areas. Rahu rules the sixth house of his chart. Obstacles come from the enemies. He certainly had lots of those, lots of backstabbing going on in the government itself. And these are very much open enemies, not hidden. Venus is females. Obstacles come to him from females. Read his biography. Many instances have been brought up. And the sun, the sun is the lord of the 12th house foreign lands and indeed unseen forces have have also ruined his reputation. Of course, the Badakesha Lord show clearly that his life is not smooth because one Badakesha Lord has gone into the eighth house Jupiter in Aries and the other into the other fire sign Sagittarius K2 in the fourth house. As I've shown you, Badakesha going into the 8th house can divide the life up into clear chapters. You have to leave the past behind. You have to move on continually. He's definitely doing that now. Why? Because his Mahadasha is the moon and the Jupiter is aspecting the moon directly. Chart, successful American singer Britney Spears. Many controversies surround her personal life, though. Just like Boris Johnson, she's Virgo rising with the 7th house of Pisces being the Badaka house. There are no planets here, but the house is afflicted strongly by Saturn with a sight and a rassy aspect, as you can see, strongly shown, and Mars has a tenth dristy aspect. So two malefics, Shani and Mars, afflicting Badaka house. This is afflicting relationships, certainly. She has found it really hard to find harmony in her personal life. She has no successful, long-lasting marriage to date. In addition, both Saturn and Mars strongly afflict her health. Saturn in the first house ascendant is actually health and it rules sixth house health issues. It's in the actual place of the head. Ascendant is the head and the brain and Mars, the subconscious mind. Mars, 12th house at Makarika. It's afflicting her fears, anxieties and all sorts of phobias coming up. Mental health is becoming destabilized. So, as well as mental health obstacles she will have to face. Also, let's look at the rulers of the Badaka house itself. First of all, Jupiter. It's so clear. Jupiter has gone into the second house. Badakesha's second house, as I've shown you, is family issues. Google Britney Spears and her family. My goodness, what controversies, what difficulties. Restraining orders on her financial freedom. This is the house of finances. It's all the huge obstacles because of this Badakesha placement. Now, the other Badakesha lord of the Badaka house is, of course, K2. K2 is with Venus and the moon. As I've shown you, the other planets become Badaka. So Venus relationships become obstacles thrown and moon is the mind, mental well-being as well. So she's got quite a heavy load here. Certainly, Badaka effects are extremely strong for Britney Spears. One thing to know, though, despite all of this, she is rich, famous. It does not stop progress in your life. It just brings the weight of these obstacles. Now, the famous singer, performer, Madonna. My goodness, what Badaka is in her chart, but somehow it's propelled her forward. She has used it as a stepping stone, probably because of the strong Mars influence in its own sign of Aries. Let's have a look.
And where will the obstacles come from? Well, both Mars and K2 are the lords of the fourth house Scorpio, where in addition, Shani has a Rassi aspect onto the Badaka house. Fourth house is the mother. And this Saturn retrograde in Scorpio shows the demise of her mother. She lost her mother when she was five years of age. This huge impact, this huge obstacle, as it were, has defined her life. In addition, other planets aspect the Badaka house. We have the moon and Mercury in the ascendant. Strong Rassi aspect on here. Moon, of course, becomes Badaka effect then. As I've shown you, moon is mother. Emotional nurturing becomes a big obstacle. Mercury is financial factor. 11th house and 2nd house. She may have had many, many financial issues early on in her life doesn't stop there because both Jupiter and Rahu are having this aspect onto this house. So Madonna is the queen of the Badaka. Really, truly, it's amazing. And this Mars and K2 conjunction shows the huge obstacles she has had to face in bringing herself up from difficulty. We may think of her as having a super clean rise, but I think she had many falls as she rose. It's the Mars in Aries that gives her the skill, though, at overcoming this. Mars in Aries is a fighter, and K2 is fire factor as well. So K2 with Mars, you fight to the death virtually to succeed very often in this Badaka house. I think she wrote a song. I get up again over and over. I fall down, then I just get up again. That was one of her very early songs. I, I, I do remember that. And I thought it was really inspiring, actually. And now I can do the Vedic system. My goodness, I can see why she wrote that song. Next, the chart of Anastasia Romanov, youngest daughter of the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II. She, together with her father, mother, all of her siblings were brutally slaughtered by the Communist Party of Russia. I've discussed Anastasia's chart in quite a few videos on my secret series, but this is quite dramatic, actually, the Badaka effect. She died when she was only 17 years of age, but still it's clearly shown that these Badakasha planets and planets afflicting Badaka house are making huge obstacles for her. First of all, there are no planets in her Badaka house. She has Cancer rising, Taurus is a Badaka house, no planets. Two planets afflicting, both malefic. Rahu afflicting from the fourth house, Rasi aspect, and Mars by his tenth aspect onto the house. They're afflicting from the fourth house of home, mother, and the house of family. So her family and home situation, her lineage is at the back of this Badaka. Equally poignant are the placements of the Badakeshas, the Lord of Taurus, or two Lords of Taurus, Venus and the Moon. Can you see? They are together in the 12th house with the Sun and Mercury, 12th house of imprisonment, 12th house of foreign lands. So the end of Badaka comes in the 12th house, as I've shown you. There are two places where that end can come. In a prison-like situation, she was under house arrest with all of her family, or in foreign lands. Very interestingly, everyone, there was a plan to take Anastasia and all of her family to England into foreign lands where she would have escaped if she had have been able to do that just before Communist Party took the whole family under house arrest. But that did not happen. So she ended up escaping only Badaka through her death, this tragic situation when she was under a 12th house situation of house arrest. Last, Johnny Depp's chart. Much analysed on my channel, but so much to see. Badaka House from Cancer Rising is Taurus. There are three planets in there. And the influence on that Badaka House is also malefic. Because both Saturn and Mars aspect. Saturn from the seventh house of relationships has a Rassi aspect onto the Badaka House. And Mars from the house of family is also afflicting. It's perfectly clear Johnny Depp talked about his early upbringing and the difficulties and obstacles he faced in his recent trial and his relationships, his public knowledge, what difficulty and tribulation he has faced. He is certainly not having harmony there, whatever the reason.
Now, with the 11th house lord being in the actual Badaka house itself, it means that friendships, network circles can be creating obstacles for Johnny Depp. Has he got friends who are supporting him? You might think Venus strong, Taurus, that would be fantastic, but it's the Badaka house. So this is obstacles, obstructions. He has to look really, really carefully and choose friends wisely. Son in the Badaka house, authority figures, father even become a source of obstacles. He's a bit of a rebel. He can have problems with authority. Venus is women, so women become obstacles to him. He has to be careful, tactful and careful dealing with females. Mercury shows business and monetary factors and losses because it is the 12th house lord. And he is currently in, by my calculations, Mercury Mahadasha. During this Badaka Dasha, because Mercury is a Badaka effect, definitely it is conjunct to the Badakasha Venus. Can you see it's strongly Badaka for him? He has lost income, huge amounts of money, but he's also been been actually given huge amounts of damages back. So it's back and forth, loss and gain. But the dispositor of this Mercury Mahadasha, the other bad acacia, not just Venus, is of course the moon. Look where the moon is. The moon is in the sixth house of litigation, conflict with K2, the never ending black hole of K2. Johnny Depp should be aware this litigation doesn't come to an end. It keeps on going. It's like Groundhog Day. It's not going to end. It's an everlasting badaka effect. He should perhaps drop the whole thing. Check out the other videos in my secret series up on your screen right now. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.